Hello, my name is Deanna Green and I'll be your instructor for this semester. This video is going to take you through the My Math Lab website that we'll be using um, this semester. And on this website we'll be um, taking quizzes and doing homework for practice and also there's a multimedia textbook um, that's online as well. If you're new to My Math Lab, you'll need to go through and create an account by clicking on this student tab right here. Um, it's pretty easy. There's instructions posted on D2L. You'll need three things in order to get registered on this website and get started. You'll need um, an email address. You'll need the course ID, which is in the syllabus, and it's also on the instructions that are posted on D2L of how to get registered for My Math Lab. Um, and then you'll also need an access code. And you can either purchase the access code in the bookstore or you can go ahead and purchase it right as you're registering here on My Math Lab. Um, it is a little bit cheaper, cheaper here on My Math Lab um, than it is in the bookstore. Um, if you've used My Math Lab in the past, then you can go ahead and just sign into your account right away. And then you can just add in a new course. Again, you'll still need an access code unless, of course, you had the course, um, you used My Math Lab with this textbook. So if you had Math 840 here at Inverhills, um, then you could possibly just add another course um, and not have to use an access code. So if you have any questions about that, um, feel free to email me about it. So. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and sign into my account so that we can take a look around the website. So um, if you've used it before, you might have several classes listed here like I do. If not, then you might only have one. So I'm going to go ahead and click on our course, which is this Math 940 Online Fall 2014. <clears throat> and so here is the home page that you will come to for our course. Along the top here is a week's worth of a calendar. And here are some up and coming assignments that are coming up. And then there's the announcements. And there's a couple of important things here. So the browser check, you'll want to make sure that you go through that. There are some plugins that you'll need to have installed on your computer in order to run this software. Um, make sure that you're logged into your computer as an administrator. Um, if not, you won't be able to install the plugins. Also, there's a how to enter answers tutorial. Um, that would be a really good idea for you to go through if you've never used my math lab before. The first thing that we're going to take a look at here is homework. And so if this screen comes up, then you can just go ahead and click on continue. Okay. So here we are in the homework. There is a homework assignment for each section in the textbook that we'll be going through. And so if you want to work on one, you just click on that homework assignment. These are not graded. They're just there for you to practice. It's a good idea to make sure that you do these, however, because you will be taking quizzes that are graded. You do need to, on a quiz, score 75% or better. If you don't score 75% or better, you will get a zero in the gradebook for the quiz. You can take each quiz as many times as necessary to get the 75%, however. Um, so it's a good idea to work on this homework ahead of time um, so that you know how the computer is wanting your, the answers entered in. Um, so if you hold your mouse over one of these questions, it will tell you that this is from Chapter 8, Section 1, Problem Number 49 in the textbook. This question is similar to Chapter 1 or Chapter 8, Section 1, Problem Number 63. So if you hold your mouse on top of a question, it will tell you um, what what question it was from the textbook. So I'm just going to click on question 11. This will open up question 11. You can click on whichever question in the homework you want. And notice I clicked on it and nothing happened. So um, now notice that so there's two internet browsers open there. And so what happened is it went behind. I don't know why it does that, but it does that to me every once in a while. So now here is the homework assignment. and um, we need to click on the box to enter in our answer. And um, the math palette is a, this um, area over here on the left. And so if you need a fraction, you can click on the fraction bar. There's a mixed number tool. There's a bunch of tools there. If you need a math tool but you don't see it, click on more. 
And if you need it, it should show up in one of these. It should either show up in this main math palette here or after you click more. Okay. So I'm just going to show you what happens when you get it wrong. I have three attempts to get this problem correct. So I'm going to check my answer. It says, nope, I'm wrong. I click done. I'm going to check it again. It says, nope, that's wrong. Click done. Now it says final check. And so now it's going to mark me wrong. It tells me the correct answer was four, but I answered five. So now I have a red triangle telling me I'm wrong and a red X telling me that I'm wrong. Now this button has changed. It now says similar exercise. So if you click on that, it'll give you a slightly new problem to work on. And so this time I'll see if I can get it right. Write an equation of the line using function notation. Then we want it to be horizontal through the point 0, 4. The equation of the line is f of x equals, and the answer for this is 4. And you can click on check answer or you can hit the, the enter or return key on your keypad will um, check the answer as well. So now it says excellent and then I can click OK. It took the red triangle away and it changed the red X to a green check mark. So each of the problems you can do as many times as you need to in order to get them correct. There is also some help buttons that you can use when you're doing your homework over here on the right. Help me solve this will take you through this exact problem that you're currently working on and then change this problem. So we'll click on question number 12. And so I want to find the equation of the line through 1, 7 and parallel to y equals 4x plus 2. Write the equation using function notation. If I click on help me solve this, it's bringing me through this exact problem. Okay, so if you click on view an example, so now see it's bringing me through this, a similar problem only with slightly different numbers. And so it will leave this problem the same. Okay, so this first one will change your current problem because it's going to take you through this one. This button will, will bring you through a different problem and keep this one the same. You can click on the textbook. This will bring you to the multimedia textbook for the section of material that you're currently um, working on in homework. So I think I clicked on section 8.1 homework, so that's what section in the textbook this is going to bring us to. <clears throat> a couple of nice things about the online version of the textbook. Um, and I'm just So you can switch, so right now I'm just view, viewing one page at a time. If you want to view like it's an open textbook, you can click on the toggle between the two views um, using this button. All right, so, um, and I'm going to go back to the single page view so that it's bigger. So this um, will play all of the section videos f that the author has created. Um, so there are three objectives for this section. You can watch individual objective videos here. This will bring up all three of these videos in one file. So it's kind of nice. Um, she does have lecture notes that go along with these, just like I have lecture notes for mine. Um, and I'll show you where you can find those if you wanted to print those off. Okay, so if you click on this play button, it will play all three objectives, or you can pick one of the objectives um, to watch. And then there's also a little concept check in this one. This th There isn't in all of the videos, but it happens to be in this one. So I'm just going to click play to play all of them. You can fast forward if you have to know which problem you wanted to see, you can fast forward until you get to that particular problem. If you need closed captioning, you click on the CC. If you want closed captioning in Spanish, you click on the ESP. Okay, so, um, so some nice features. If you want to go back to the menu, you can click on menu and it'll take you back to the menu. So those are her lecture videos. And again, these three videos are all contained within this one. They're also um, with each objective heading here. Um, there's a link to the videos there as well. So another nice thing about the online version of the textbook is <clears throat> that through, when she's going over some of these examples, so there's a video of a problem like this, and this is a, a <clears throat> an example for you to try. Okay, so the triangle is an example for you to try. These little video cameras are videos for you to watch. So that's um, kind of a cool thing about the textbook that's online.
And so here's um, the exercise sets from the textbook for this section. And so these are just some problems for you to try. Those are the video or the triangles. And then these little arrows would be um, would be videos. Okay, so that's the online version of the textbook. And then there's a little calculator. It's just a real basic calculator that you can use um, while you're working on homework if you don't have it handy with you. And then there's this Ask My Instructor link. This is really nice. If you use this to ask me a question about the homework, it will bring a link. It will send me a link so that I can see exactly what problem you're working on so that you could just type in um, a verbal question for me that you have about that question or, or about this particular problem. And then you can print off either an individual problem or you can print off the entire homework assignment. So if you wanted to do the homework but not at the computer, say you wanted to take it to work or bring it to school or something and work on it somewhere away from your computer, you can do that and then come back and enter in your answers later. So that's how to do the homework. And then the quizzes, the quizzes are very similar to the homework, they just don't have the help buttons um, on them. So it brings you up to this page. If you want some practice on how to enter in answers, you can do it there. So in the quizzes, you can um, bounce back and forth between problems. Notice there are no help buttons here. There are 19 problems on this quiz. Um, if we go ahead and I'm going to get it wrong, but I'm going to type in an answer just so that there's an answer there. And I'm going to submit it. And that's just warning me that I didn't finish the quiz, and that's okay because I just wanted to show you what happens. So here are my results. So I got them all wrong. The little X's in the parentheses mean I didn't means I did not answer that question. This big red X means I answered it but got it wrong. And so you can preview the test. This was the correct answer, and when I hold my cursor over it, it says that I didn't answer anything. So here's the one that I got wrong, and so it's got the red triangle there, and um, it, when I hold my cursor over it shows in yellow what I answered, and what's showing up there is the correct answer. And you can print this off. You can choose to just print the questions only, or print the test with the correct answers and your answers. So, um, so you can print that off. Okay, so that's about the quizzes. And then um, <clears throat> you don't really need to worry about the student organizer. You could go in there and see what's in there if you'd like to, but we won't be using it. The video organizer is where you'll find all of the lecture notes that go along with the author's videos if you wanted to use those. And she's got pretty good videos, so it's a good resource for you to use. Um, there's a student solution manual if you're working on any of the problems out of the textbook. Um, there's a solution manual for all of the odd problems. Tools for success is just some study tips. Um, the multimedia library is another great place for some really good resources. So I'll select all and we'll just do it for um, one of the chapters. So we'll bring up all of the resources for chapter 8. So for each chapter, there's a test prep video. That would be a great thing for you to watch. There are PowerPoint slides. Um, I don't, there might be some useful stuff in there, but the test prep video for sure would be a great thing for you to watch. Animations would be wonderful. Um, this is a link to each of the sections for the textbook. And then also um, you can see all of the videos that the author has created are um, here as well. And then there are some tutoring services. We will not be using the discussions. And then um, they're the only thing really in the course tools, um, there's really nothing in there that you'll need. So it's homework for practice, the quizzes that are required, and then um, the grade book is here. Um, all of the stuff from this grade book I'll be putting in the D2L grade book, however. Um, and then the video organizer. Um, is where you'll find all of the lecture notes that go along with the author's videos. And then um, in the multimedia library, that's where you'll find all of the different resources that are available with the textbook. And there are some really great resources in there that you should check out. 
So that is all about my math lab. If you have any questions about anything with my math lab, please let me know. Thanks.